In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you could have passed a FTMO challenge or my Forex funds challenge with just one trade. I'm going to break it down step by step using my unrefined smart money concept strategy. And I'm going to highlight the three step process that you can follow when looking to execute trades in the future. And I'm going to break this down in depth for you guys now. So number one, break of structure. Number two is our POI, our point of interest. And number three is our entry schematic. And in this video, I'm going to tie them all together, show you guys step by step exactly how you can use them within the live markets. Okay, so this is USD CHF on the one hour time frame. Okay, and let's just jump straight in here, guys. Okay, so let's play this on. And you can see clearly that price is broke structure to the downside. So the first part of the mechanical strategy is number one, which is identifying our break of structure. We can do that by marking this on as a BOS. Okay, we've broke structure to the downside. This is indicated by this strong bearish move here, breaking these lows here. Okay, you can clearly see this strong bearish momentum. This is a clear indication that institutions are involved in this market and clearly they want to push price to the downside. Okay, one thing to note is for institutions to push price this strongly to the downside, they have to buy into the highs in order to create liquidity. This liquidity is then used as fuel to push this market to the downside. This up, up move here also allows institutions to add strongly their sell positions. This also tricks retail traders in thinking that the market's going up. So retail may go long, which also adds as extra fuel and extra liquidity for institutions to push price to the downside. Okay, so we've identified a break of structure to the downside. We can then go ahead and mark on our guarded high. So this is our invalidation level. We can mark this on as a GH. And let's zoom in here, guys. Okay, let's bring this down a little bit. Okay, perfect. So we can mark on our impulsive leg. So the impulsive leg is the only range that we are looking at. We're not bothered about any other price action or anything of the sort. We're only bothered about the most recent impulsive move. This indicates the most recent activity from the institutions. So within this gray area, we're looking for a short trade. If price closes above this gray area, the guarded high, that would invalidate our long bias. Okay, we can then go and mark on number two, which is our POI, our point of interest. So let's mark that on. And we mark that on as a blue box here. Okay, so this is if and only if price comes back to our POI and our entry schematic lines up out of this area, then we will be looking for a short trade on this market. Okay, so if and only if price comes back to our POI. So that's number one and two. And number three is our entry schematic. So in terms of the unrefined strategy, the entry schematic is a rejection out of our POI. Okay, and note it has to be out of the POI. Okay, so we're looking for price to come back into our area here. And things to note, so, you know, a lot of people probably know this market may be going short to the downside, but you can see the sort of like rejections here. Retail traders are getting absolutely messed up in this market. And the reason why is because, you know, they're selling on these breaks, you know, with stop losses within this zone or stop losses, you know, anywhere within this area. They're selling on the retests here. So, for example, 
you know, they're selling on the breaks here. They're selling on the retest when price comes back to this area because, you know, from the retail perspective, the way these look, retail look at the market is, you know, once these, once this support is broken, then it should act as a resistance, right? It should act as a resistance. So, you know, they're entering on the breaks, entering on the retests. However, that's not how markets work. Because at any point, price can come back into our POI, our point of interest. This is the area where institutions were interested in shorting the market. Okay, And when price comes back in here, the institutions have a decision. Okay, Do they exit these long positions that they use to create liquidity at around break even? Do they exit them long positions and do they enter more short positions that's indicated by the strong rejection candle because on the smaller time frames okay so this is our poi imagine price is coming back up to the poi on the smaller time frames it's going to look something like this so this we're back into the poi here this is our poi price comes in on the smaller time frames this rejection candle here this will look like a break of structure, a shift, and then a continuation. So this rejection on the higher time frame, the one hour, this will translate over to this on the smaller time frames because you're going to have structure chopping up and then the strong rejection would violate structure to the downside on the lower time frames. That would indicate that you know sellers are jumping back in this market. The institutions are back involved. OK, so that's why we use a strong rejection, because that indicates the lower time frame market structure shifts. Entry is simply on the close of that rejection candle out of our POI. Stop loss, conservative just above the wick there, you know, very conservative would be just above the guarded high. But a few pips be above the uh, rejection candle, that's good enough. OK, in terms of targets. Targets are going to be equal lows. First TP here. So the, the, the end of the impulse, that's going to be the first target. And then ultimately, you know, guys, we're looking for more continuation to the downside, filling these ranges down here. Okay, because any buyers that try to step in this market too early, their stop losses are going to be below here. And as you know, the markets like to reach for the liquidity, which is pooled below these lows here. So we're going to be reaching, you know, below this equal low for our ultimate targets there. So let's allow this to play out. You can see price instantly rejects and, you know, within a couple hours, well, within about three, four hours, five hours, price is already a one to three risk to reward. We're taking a lot of profit off at this low because, you know, price can always reject these lows here so price can reject these lows and then you know if we form a double bottom or something then look to push to the upside so it's always smart to take some off the table when price comes down to equal lows and then you know guys look price absolutely melted to the downside and you can see there that's pushing like a one to five risk to reward um, and let's see if we get oh this is current price now okay so this was yesterday and price is currently at a one to six risk to reward. So, you know, if you risk 2% on this trade, that's a, you know, you've got a, an opportunity there to make 12% on this trade. And don't get me wrong, don't get this twisted. I didn't capitalize, I didn't take 12% on this trade. You know, I risked 1% on this trade and I made 4%, okay? But what I'm saying is if you risk 2% on your FTMO challenge, you could have made up to 12%. That would have passed your FTMO challenge in just one trade there. Okay, so that just really highlights, you know, the, the power of this strategy and really what can be achieved within one to two trades with this strategy. Okay, so because we're trend following, you know, when these trades play out, you, you know, you have that opportunity to make some serious, serious rewards on your trades there. Okay, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. As always, please like this video. 
as well. And I will see you guys in the next one. All right, take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.